Hello and welcome back to another Formable Nations video. Today I'm going to be tackling what is quite a difficult one, by my standards anyway, in the form of the Holy Roman Empire. Um, I don't really have a strategy here, I kind of am just going to wing it from what I think I need to do and see how we go from there, but you're welcome to follow in my footsteps. So I'm going in as Germany and I'm going in on Iron Man mode, but I've stuck the historical AI focuses off Yet I've kept the AI behaviour so they'll still do their standard historical focus tree paths. So in order to form the Holy Roman Empire, we're basically going to have to take over much of Central Europe. Um, my thought process on how to do this basically involves taking Belgium, demilitarising the Rhineland, then declaring on Yugoslavia and getting into a joint war with France and the Czechs. Then we have our civil war, join Britain, and then see what we can eat up to finally win the achievement. But I don't really know my plan going forward from there, so let's see how we can do this. My first focus is going to be Army Innovations. We're not doing a four-year plan because we kind of want to save the industry research bonus till later on. Building up some sieves. This is what my 1936 research looks like. Okay, and that should be us good to go. While this is all going on, I'm going to train 21 divisions of standard infantry. Okay, 4th of February, let's do our first justification against Belgium. The disaster of the Napoleonic Wars. Gone. Okay, so we got to the 20th of March, and with 72 political power, we're now going to do our second justification on Yugoslavia, so that we can co-belligerent in France and Czechoslovakia due to their guarantees. I think I'm going to start decrypting down France when we eventually get to war with them. Naval rearmament, so that when we do oppose Hitler we've got the uh, expatriate the communists ready. A lot of your time in the early game it feels like is just waiting for the initial war with Belgium. I've basically got everything else covered, I've got a good naval invasion to the north, I've got the lads ready on the Rhineland, we're even building up against the Czechs over here. Things just are going quite well. Okay, we've started researching our Panzer Freeze. We need to just pick up the other things to make sure we can actually win this war, like decent artillery. Now that Dispersed Industry 1 and Excavation 1 are about to be done, we should be able to get Dispersed Industry 2 before 4 year plan finishes, which means that the bonus will arrive for the next one, which is Dispersed Industry 3. You can time this quite well, all in 1936. Okay, let's see if we can have a quick foray into Belgium. So as they push in, we go around the back, boop, and we're here, which lets our tanks very quickly shoot around the sides and take all the cities. Change the world. My final message. Goodbye. And done. It's as simple as that. Okay, so let's take Belgium and the Congo, but then let's liberate Rwanda and Burundi, because we can have some completely negative uh, threat level. Okay, so in order to deal with our next war, we do have a sort of glaring issue, and that is our massive open border with France. So the way I usually do it is I stick 18 troops on the Maginot, and 6 troops on this little province here on Belgium. My national focuses will basically consist of me rushing down to get the extra research slot now, so that we can be doing other things like doctrines in the background. Okay, the justification is ready. Let's see how we do. So the French are dogpiling into the Belgium area, but hopefully our little line can stand here. The Maginot appears to be holding, and the Czechoslovakia is looking a bit grim. But other than that, there's hope. We are somehow making good gains into uh, the Czechs here. Yeah, we, we definitely just stuck five tanks around the back end to see how fast we could get here. Oh, um, I'm going to be brutally honest, I did not expect to win that that easily. Okay, but now that that's done, in the early month of April, we can now send all our units to the other side of the front to see about doing a massive offensive, and I literally mean stacking every single one of these units onto this front and sending the tanks through for a massive push. Let's see if we can push through. The key point with Croatia is to completely ignore them, because we don't really care about Croatia here, not really at all. Okay, can we push through? That's the only question. Did somebody say something about a cipher for France? Once you push through here, I'll activate the cipher and we'll use it as an excuse to push through the area. Okay, we're through. It's time to activate the cipher. This should give us an edge to push 
on basically the main front. Uh oh. The tanks are going a little bit wild now, and I think they're in trouble. That typically means we can start to push them down on the Maginot. Make sure they're not going anywhere. And I believe Free France has capitulated. Yeah, basically rushing straight for Paris will do that. Okay, so first things first, let's take European France. Now, we've got such high tension, we kind of need to bring it down to somewhere a bit more reasonable. And we need it because we need to have 100 relations with Britain at some point. And if we've got a lot of uh, aggressive expansion, they're not really going to like us very much. So let's, uh, let's see if we can liberate a little bit of Africa. Okay, hopefully leaving us there at 47% world tension with 45 personal threat isn't too bad. Unfortunately, when we go to do our next focuses involving a certain German civil war, we won't exactly be making many friends because this causes more world tension. Uh, yeah, we'll cross that bridge, I suppose. We'll cross that bridge. Okay, because we're having a civil war, the only practical thing to do is to delete our army because, well, you don't want to have an army when you're about to have a civil war. It's time to get to work opposing Hitler just so we can form a Holy Roman Empire. I mean, look, we're looking pretty good so far. We've only got Netherlands, Luxembourg, Switzerland, Austria, and Italy left. I mean, that should be us done. I've currently got all my spies in France trying to make sure that France doesn't do something stupid and rebel on me when I've got my eye turned. Those French, always being revolutionary. You also might notice we're still at war with Yugoslavia, but once we have our civil war, that war actually defaults to the other side, not to the non-aligned side. So we're going to have like a fake peace out with them soon. Uh-oh, the Wehrmacht officers have challenged Mr. Mustache. I think we've got a hat boy on the way with his legendary hat. So in case you didn't know, when Germany has their civil war, it's so calculated that any territory you've previously taken will remain with you. The most useful one being Czechoslovakia because suddenly they're going to have to send all their units onto the Czechoslovakian front to stop you. So as we can see here, the Germans are pushing into Czechoslovakia, despite the fact that nobody's there. Yeah, they, uh, they're not too, uh, doing too good with this whole frontline business. It's, oh, they haven't even defended Berlin. Oh, it's worse than we thought. And somebody appears to have kicked the bucket. Now, while this war is going on, it may be important for you to sharpen air safety regulations. It gives you a massive debuff, but it can prevent an event that will screw over our entire run. We need the Hindenburg to have an incident, not to uh, crash in a ball of deadly flames. It's, it's very important. Okay, we appear to have secured the north. It's just about getting to Munich now, while they still send a lad over here for no reason. <gasps> Rwanda, how could you? We were friends. And there goes Munich. Is that the end of the war? Oh, come on. What left? Oh, Dresden, probably. Ugh, oh, come on. Wunderbar. Okay, the German military hunter. Now we are making progress. And it's not even 1938. Which means we can secure the new state and walk towards the return of the Kaiser. We will need a lot of political power for what's coming up, so we're probably going to prison the leadership. The Hindenburg incident. There we go. This is a semi-guaranteed run now. This is the kind of RNG event which solidifies whether or not you can form the Holy Roman Empire. And because of this event triggering, we seem to be in the clear, he says. As you might have noticed, I kind of deleted my entire army. Uh, that's because I don't really want them right now. Because when we're going to demand the Kaiser, we don't want the Kaiser. So, no army. Okay, the state has been secured. Let's revive the Kaiserreich. Okay, revive the Kaiserreich. It's a slow process, but we're getting there. We need 40% for non-aligned. How are we doing on that? We could be doing better. If we ban communism, then we do anti-raids. How much closer? Oh, we're getting there. Let's come back to this later. Okay, we're back. I've had some food and we're good to go again. So, are we doing this rather quickly or rather slowly? I can't remember. I think, judging by the fact I'm aligning Hungary, we're going to do align Hungary and Romania, integrate them as puppets, 
and then use that at a time to reduce our world threat? At least that's what I think we're doing. I don't really remember. Oh, but the Spanish Civil War is still going on. Goodness me. Not for too much longer, I suppose. Not much too longer at all. I'm going to start building some submarines in case anything goes wrong with the war in Italy and we have to navally invade somewhere. In the meantime, let's create a faction with Hungary so we can annex them. We will call it the Smiley Face Faction. Nice. Now we just have to get Romania to join it, and we should be able to annex them both. Okay, so a bit of a development. It appears that Italy and Britain are now at war with one another, which doesn't directly cause me any problems, but it definitely could be an issue soon, because I need to eat this Italy, and I don't want Britain to steal it from me. Okay, that's Romania on board. Now we can integrate the war economies, and then form the Holy Roman Empire. Back on track. Romania accepts and Hungary accepts. So as this war develops it appears that Britain has taken over Sardinia. Things are getting more heated in Europe and it's got nothing to do with me. Okay the next step has been passed. The Netherlands have blocked the return of Wilhelm II. So in order to do this we need to make sure that Wilhelm III becomes the leader. This allows us to reinstate Prince Wilhelm's right of succession and then modernise the succession laws. That's why we kept all of that political power. Okay, the next thing to do is join the Allies. But before we do that, we could see about eating up Austria. What we can do is if we create a faction with Austria, as such, I think there's something like a 95% chance that they'll choose to join with us. We can do that while we're doing the next two focuses to get an alliance with the Shade. It basically gives them 140 days to decide whether they want to be eaten, Austrian pro-German sentiment soars. Yes, the lesser German solution was a mistake, which means we just get to eat Austria. And the Austrian people agreed. Boom. Okay, the communists have been expatriated to France, um, which we kind of own, which doesn't really make much sense. This is an update on the faction situation. It appears that the Allies have basically got full control over the Balkans. Um, and then Spain is looking a little bit too red for my liking. Maybe that's where all the communists went in the end. British naval dominance has been accepted. Time to form an alliance with the Shade. Now hopefully they will accept. Especially since there's a massive wall that's basically going down. Uh oh, things are... this is... this is an actual serious issue. It, if Italy falls, I, I need to go to war with the Allies. Oh, things never go as they plan, do they? Oh, there's always something that goes wrong. The German Empire joins the Allies. Okay. The key point is, are we supposed to join their war? But maybe it's the way forward. And somehow, I have war score. All I'm going to take is Tuscany, and then I'm going to click done. And a lot of people are joining. I can request the titles. I'm 158 pp, it's all I need. If we can achieve this, this is big. This is, this is the biggest thing we can wait for. 150 political power, British titles, restored. Oh, the British government accepts the requests and we will send a liaison. Now, all we're hoping for now is a tragic incident. The Kaiser is dead, long live the Kaiser in. Okay, Victoria is here, which gives us massive boosts, uh, division defense, Stability, the full Kaban. But it most importantly gives us revive the Holy Roman Empire, which means we can now revive it. All that's left is to take out five remaining countries, uh, because suddenly Austria is back on the menu. Thanks Britain for making things complicated. The best way for us to do this is probably just justifying on the Netherlands, which will bring in Italy and Austria and all the rest of them. But once they get called in, we annex England. It's, it's probably the fastest and the safest way to do this. Okay, now I'm going to very slowly stick one lad on every single one of these provinces as best I can, so that if they ever get called into a war, we kind of semi-eat England in one big dollop. So now as the final troop makes his way to New Zealand, we should be ready to leave the faction and keep all of our troops exactly where they are. You might notice that the manpower is dwindling because I've sent so many men just around the world on these crazy expeditions to secure as many provinces as possible. Now can we do our justification? Yes, we can. 
So let's go for the Netherlands. Luxembourg has joined the Allies. I don't know if you saw that. That is good news because that means that's just somebody else we can take on along the way. Although it does feel like most of the world is in the Allies now. I mean, this is this is getting ridiculous. You may be looking at Italy and thinking, is this the work of a madman or a genius? And the answer is most certainly absolute insanity. I have no idea what I'm going to do. I'm hoping the Allies are just going to stick troops here and not in Britain, and that should do us fair enough. And I guess now is the time to find out. I think the best course of action is just to declare war and see what happens. So, we're at war with the Netherlands. What does Britain do? Boom. It did work. I did wonder whether Britain would want to join in on this chaos, and... Uh, I think the answer was yes. Yes, they did want to join in. So we need to very quickly take down the Netherlands. We need to justify on Switzerland. Oh, it's going to take a while, but it's necessary. And once that's done, we should be able to make all the pushes we need to. There goes Luxembourg. And Luxembourg was taken out, I believe, the same day. Canada is in. <laughs> a small blob in Australia. Waiting on New Zealand. We'll see what comes of that. Okay, so update on the wall. Um, things are going semi-okay. The Italy war is going about as well as one could have expected, because they barely had any troops when we began. <sighs> Nobody said it would be easy. Nobody said it would be easy. I just didn't expect it to be this hard. Okay, I'm going to wait for a hundred days, declare on Switzerland, and then I'm going to finish the war with Britain. I don't want to take any risks with this. Not a single risk at all. We've come too far to fail. Just got off the phone with China and they've humbly suggested that we join their faction. And I said I'm damn well tempted to agree with them, but I think for the day I'm, I'm not going to join them. So I'm trying to sneak the tanks around the, uh, the backside to get to Palermo so that we can capitulate Italy. Because I'm not 100% sure whether they count as a major. Okay. The justification for Switzerland is finished. Okay, so now if we take London, having pushed into Switzerland, and hopefully take Bristol too, is that the end? Is this a win? I don't know anymore. I don't know if anything counts as a win. There's London gone. The United Kingdom has capitulated. So is that the end of the war, or do I have to get Italy as well? That sounds like I have to get Italy as well. Which, if that is the case, that might complicate things. Okay, so after reloading the game, it appears that the Republic of Italy is quite literally the last place, and they're on 99%. So, is taking Trieste going to win it? No, because Yugoslavia owns it. So the best course of action is we take that, and we could also consider navally invading and taking here too. Okay, we've got some naval invasions. We'll see if this works. This is me speaking from a position of very little faith. Oh, we took the north side of the island. Right, if we take Cagillari, or however you pronounce it, I wonder if that counts. It doesn't all. Okay, is that the end of the war? That's the next question. How many more majors are there? United Kingdom? British Raj literally just became a major. Are you kidding me? On what basis are they a major? Oh, 50 factories. Well, that is an issue. Right, new course of action. We can't win a war against the Allies because Switzerland just capitulated. Okay, that is quite a lot of Germany. The only question remains is if we scroll down, it's possible. Oh, I'm gonna click the button and let's see what we get. <gasps> Beautiful, it's done. The rebirth of the Holy Roman Empire. There we go. I was kind of hoping to have a peace deal and not see the Libyan electorate at its height. But, um, well, basically, the British Raj becoming a major, despite the fact it's a puppet, doesn't seem fair to me at all. This seems completely broken. I guess I should have stuck more units on uh, Goa or wherever it was so that we could have pushed into British Raj sooner. But never mind. Anyway, on that, I think I'm going to leave it. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching this terrible process of me seeing if I could form the HRE. Long story short, yes. Yes, I can. Is it fun? 
it could be a lot funner, but <laughs> this game is so painful sometimes. Anyway, I'll see you all later. If you enjoyed, feel free to subscribe, feel free to like, feel free to comment, and um, yeah. Bye.